Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Okay. So today I'm going to be painting Gift from a Snowman. I'll be sipping on a little spiked seltzer. And I do hope that if you enjoy this painting that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, Mars black, fire red, chrome orange, green oxide, cobalt blue, and deep yellow. And of course, you can switch up those colors as well, too, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round brush and I have a number two round brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process. Of course, you can switch those up too if you'd like. And if you're painting along with me, you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same paints and brushes and all that good stuff. So that's down there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're drawing an outline for our snowman and our door. I'll be using my pencil, and I'm just gonna give you a couple of little markers and we'll connect those markers and by the time we're done, we'll have a sectioning type system to put some um, base coats on the painting. So I'm gonna use my pencil. I'm gonna go down to the bottom of my canvas about halfway in the middle and make myself a mark. And then I am going to come up about, I would say about a quarter of the way up my canvas. So if this is about halfway, maybe about a quarter of the way, and I'm gonna connect these two dots right here with a ball. So something like this. So you just want to make sure it comes out farther than your, a little bit out farther than your mark. Something like that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up about halfway my canvas and then maybe drop it just a little bit, make myself another mark. And then I am going to come down this ball a little bit, maybe to about here, make another mark. And now I'm going to make myself another ball. So something like this and again you want to come out a little bit further and if it makes your brain work better making snowballs you could certainly connect this like this but we're going to be painting over that whole section so whatever makes your brain work to do full circles that's great and then what i'm going to do i'm going to come up from this about maybe two inches that's going to be the top of my of my snowman head i'll come down this one maybe a little bit somewhere in through here and then I'm gonna come up from here, maybe about another two inches. That's gonna be my border for the top head part of my, of my snowman. So something like this. And again, make sure you come out a little bit further. And your snowman's probably gonna be shaped way different than mine. I don't think there's two snowmen alike in this world that are exactly the same shape. So yours may be more slender or larger, whatever works is totally fine. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down about halfway down the face. So somewhere maybe about in through here. And I wanna come the same distance up to the top. So you could use one of your brushes as a measuring tool and kind of make 
a mark somewhere into here and then go up to the top and make yourself a similar mark so maybe somewhere around there and then you're going to connect these two with a vertical line it doesn't have to be perfect just something that looks pretty vertical you'll be good with so something like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here maybe about I would say about two and a half to three inches and I'm going to make myself kind of a diagonal line that if I was to connect it it would go to the corner so something like this do an invisible line kind of and then you're going to come out here maybe about two inches and then you're going to connect here to here with an arcing motion so something like that and that's all i'm going to do for oh wait one more line sorry you got one more line come up your snowman at the bottom maybe about an inch and a half to two inches and then do a diagonal line from the corner to that mark right into there. Now we're done. So you can put your pencil away. We are going to be using our large brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting our sky and this little sliver of what's going to be like the walkway. So I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. I'm going to be using black and white to make myself a dark gray. This is meant to be like a snow snowstorm kind of day so or it could be nighttime, whatever you interpret it to be. So I'm going to take some black paint and a little bit of my white paint, and I'm just going to spin it together. It will turn a little bit darker when it dries, so just mentally kind of prepare for that. But once you've got yourself a nice dark gray color, you're just really going to paint in these two sections. So I'm going to go right up to the edge of my house, and if I bump into my house and I and I make it a little skewed don't worry about it because you're going to be painting the whole house and you're going to have ample opportunity to to make any corrections and same thing with your snowman certainly bump into it i need to get this back little sliver by his neck and you can certainly you know make this as light or as dark as you want i'm kind of going for a little bit darker of a look so when i put my snow on later it will really pop out and when my snowman sits against it my snowman will pop out too so that's why i'm going for a darker look you could certainly again maybe you want yours to be a nice blue sky maybe you don't want yours to be a snowstorm but you can certainly have fun with it so i'm going to do this section here and then i'm going to do this little tiny sliver down here and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got these two sections colored in here you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step okay so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting the base coat for our door we're going to pre-mix ourselves a brown color and I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to, to paint this on. Now, just keep in mind, this is a, you know, a fun, whimsical painting. You can really have this door whatever color you want. Yours can be lighter or darker than mine. Maybe you want a purple door or a green door or a blue door. Whatever color you want is totally fine. You just want to have a nice base coat over the whole thing. So how I'm going to mix my brown for this is I'm going to be using black, orange, and white. So I've already pre-mixed a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm going to be doing or what color I'm going for. So I'm going to be taking, and I need an, enough to paint this big huge area. So I'm going to be using quite a bit of black, something like this, quite a bit of orange, just kind of scooping it up, and a little bit of white. And I'm just going to blend it all together until I get myself a nice brown color that I visually like for my door. Maybe yours is more on the orangey side, so maybe it looks more like a wood grain. Maybe, you're, maybe you add a little red to it or yellow to it. Just don't go too red because it won't have enough contrast with your, um, with your flower, your poinsettia flower, but definitely get this into whatever tone of brown that you like you can even if you if i take you back to first grade art class if you mix green and red that also makes brown too but you want to make sure that you use a little bit of white in your mixture so that way it will not be see-through on you so the white is going to help to make it 
nice and solid for you. And then once you've got the color that you want, you're just painting in that whole darn door. So you can, again, make it as light or as dark as you want. You don't need any fancy brush stroke. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more white in it as I go towards that left-hand side. I like the darkness of it, but I think I want it just a little bit lighter. So just modifying on the fly here. And then once I've got my, you know, second color here, I'll just kind of blend it on in together. And again, you can have yours as light or as dark or as, maybe you want a gray door. That would look super cool too. So nice modern twist on it. Lots of people are ha painting their houses gray th these days. Nice neutral kind of contemporary color. So just feel free to, to make this whatever color you want. I am going a little bit on the darker side again so I'm gonna have lights in my in my windows I'm gonna have snow falling in the sky so I'm going for this darker background so all of those other things really pop so again you can you can modify it as you as you see fit you're gonna paint this little area in through here and if you bump into any wet sky paint as you as you're going along here don't worry just paint it on in and any boo-boos will be able to be hidden with snow. <laughs> We're gonna have, at least on my canvas, I'm gonna have a big old, almost like a blizzard kind of snowstorm by the time I'm, I'm done with this. So I can hide any, any little boo-boos with snow. And then I'm gonna just kind of come right down this edge into here, trying to keep it pretty straight. But again, if, if I don't go totally straight, I'm all right with that. And then I'm just going to paint this all in. And you can see I bumped into my snowman. Oh, well, <laughs> it's just it just works out. You know, we're going to I'm going to be painting the whole snowman. I'm going to be painting snow along the whole canvas. So every everything works. And then if you want, you know, as you're done, you can just give it one last kind of a smooth stroke over the whole thing. That's going to bring all of these colors together and if you didn't you know have a solid color maybe you you know have a couple of tones in yours this will just bring them all together nicely and then we're going to use the same brush for the next step so once you've got your base coat for your door you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting our snowman. So I'm gonna be using my big brush and the colors I'm using are black, blue, and white. And if you wanted to, you could also, if you went brown on your um, building, you could certainly use a little bit of that too, but I think for the most part, I'll probably be using black, blue, and white. And if I pick up any of the brown, I'll let you know. So in my head, my light source for this painting is coming from the windows of my house so I'm gonna have the right side of my snowman the lightest and the left side the darkest so I'm gonna start on this left hand side with black and blue on my brush to get the shadowy side of here and then I'll put a little bit of shadow between the snowballs and then I'm gonna get it to go lighter and lighter as it goes towards that right hand side so I'm gonna start with black and blue on my brush and I'm going to be using a dotting technique so I'm going to start over here and I'm going to just kind of get my snow snowball shape started and pay no attention really to your lines at this point in the middle because you're just kind of shaping these you know your shadows are going to be between the balls but they you don't have to pay attention to those actual pencil marks at this point so I'm going to go over here on the left hand side just using my, my dotting type technique to get this dark shadowy area over here. Maybe bring it in to the ball a little bit where, where, those, where I feel that the balls would meet. So something like this. And definitely down at the bottom, I want a good amount of this darkness down at the bottom. So something like this. And then once you've got it pretty darn dark in through that area, now, without washing your brush, you're gonna start picking up white and a little bit of blue if you want to, going towards that right hand side. So without washing my brush, I picked up some white paint and you'll see 
that I'm going to start to kind of back in to my shadowy area to overlap it a little bit so it looks like it belongs together and it's a natural kind of gradient. So again, I picked up a little bit of white with my, with my dirty brush and I'm starting to get this to blend into that darker area. Picking up just a little bit more white as I go up towards this head. And again, I'm, I'm not going very far away from my shadowy area right now. I'm just kind of getting it, getting this lighter area to blend in. I know there's gonna be a little bit of shadow underneath my hat too, which is gonna be this area in through here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this darkness up and through there. And now I'm gonna to start to add a little bit more white to my brush and I'm gonna still continue to work in, in what I'm referring to as the shadowy areas, which are gonna be between the snowballs. So again, I'm just kind of working my way towards where I feel is gonna be the lightest. And every time I go to pick up white paint and I add it to my canvas, I back it into the previous section. So I'm dotting, dotting, dotting and then I lightly just kind of tap it into the section that I was at before. So that way it looks like they're almost overlapping, they're blending with one another, and I don't have just sections of color going from one side to the next. And I'm just gonna kind of keep continuing to do this I, as, until I feel like I need to reload my brush again. I think I want a little bit coming in through here. This is gonna be the shadow of the of where the balls meet, so something like this. And now I'm, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm just about ready to start loading on the white, white, bright kind of parts to get this to be really nice and three-dimensional, but just kind of working some of this darker paint off of my brush. Now I am picking up a good amount of white paint, and now I'm gonna start adding those light, it getting really lighter and lighter and lighter towards where I feel the light source is. And your snowman may end up looking way fluffier than mine or way smoother than mine. Whatever happens, just let it happen. All snowmen are gonna be different kind of textures and shapes and sizes. So it's the beautiful part of doing one of these fun, whimsical paintings. They all end up looking a little bit different and yours is gonna look like yours and mine is gonna look like mine. So we just kind of go for it and let happen what's gonna happen. Just make sure that you bring your snowballs all the way to the next section. So this is gonna be to that brown section and I'm letting it have a little rough edge along the, along the side so it looks like it's fluffy snow. And then I'm just gonna make sure it gradually goes in towards those shadowy areas and makes it look like it belongs together. And again, when I go to blend it with the neighboring area, I'm not pressing my brush hard. I'm really just kind of lightly tapping it on top to almost put these little like speckly kind of marks on it. And you might find, again, that you want yours lighter or darker or more blue or more gray than mine. So just go with whatever is visually appealing to you. But if you can add some dimensionality to it with these, these shadows, that's gonna really help to tell the story that there's a light source over on that right-hand side. And then let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We are going to be, hmm, we're gonna use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your snowman all nice and fluffy, you can put this large brush away in your water cup or wherever you want to. Take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are going to be painting the pot for our plant. I do want to forewarn you though that before we start this step that you have your door dry. So, you know, you can either take an extra long break if you need to, or you can sit here and blow on it, which might take you a while, or you can just whip out a blow dryer and blow dry it if you need to. So whatever method that you would like to take, or if yours is already dry by now, excellent, but if not, you can certainly have that dry. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, red or excuse me orange and yellow and how i'm going to do this is i'm going to do a simple shape with just black and color it in and then i'll put a highlight on it over by the um, window side of the door so i'm going to put black paint on my medium brush 
I'm going to make myself a couple of markers. I'm going to have on the side where it hits the snowman, I'm going to come up about halfway up this middle section, make myself a mark. I'm going to come down this bottom section, maybe about an inch, inch and a half, make myself another mark. And then I'm going to come about halfway between here and here and make myself a mark about halfway into my door, somewhere like this. Maybe a little bit lower in the height so we can have it kind of tipping a little bit. And I'm going to connect it with an arcing motion, something like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this bottom one, only the it's going to come in a little bit further than this one. So maybe something like that. A little bit of an arcing motion. And then connect these two sides. So if you can have a little bit of an angle on this right hand side, that'll look cute like it, he's tipping it. I think I want this bottom to be just a little bit lower like that. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm just going to paint it in with a thin coat of black paint. I don't need it to be really thick. It's almost okay even if it's see-through a little bit so that way it'll just show some of the hues of the building but I don't need it to be super thick. I just want a nice coat on there and then as I meet the snowman I'm going to just kind of tap my brush so I still keep some of that textural element of the edge of the snowman because I don't want it to be a clean line. I want this to look like it's behind the snowman. And you can always fluff the snow back up if you ended up getting it a little bit too smooth on that edge. And then once I have this on here, what I'm going to do is without washing my brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white paint and I'm going to put my highlight down this right hand side. So I'm just going to put a line of white like that and then I'm going to just pull it with a little bit of an arcing motion into my pot, something like this, while it's still wet. I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel like this. And then while it's still wet, I can just kind of blend it in a little bit. If yours ends up kind of streaky, that's okay. Just let it happen. It's just meant to look like this is this right side of the pot is being illuminated by the lights in the in the house in the windows so I'm just getting that a little bit lighter over there on that side and before I call it and say that I'm all done I'm gonna add a touch of glow from the actual windows that we're gonna be putting on so I'm putting a little bit of yellow and orange on my brush this is going to add a little bit more of a glow like the lights in the house are putting this, you know, kind of warm glow from their light bulbs over here on this side. And then that's all I'm going to do for this step. I will be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your pot painted, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting our moldings on our door. So I'm going to use my medium brush and I'm going to be using my original brown color that I created plus white. So I want my moldings to be a little bit lighter than the base coat of the actual door itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my original brown and I'm just going to add some white paint to some of it. You might want to keep some of it for later as well or you know you can just pre-mix yourself another shade of brown that's a little bit lighter than your first shade so anything a little bit lighter will work even if it's a different tone or whatnot it will work because people paint their houses many different colors and the moldings can be way different than the regular one so what i'm going to do is on this right hand side now that i've got that lighter color on my brush on the right hand side i'm going to come down about an inch inch and a half and make myself a mark i'm going to connect that to this edge here you might have yours at a little bit different of an angle whatever angle it's at you can always adjust it right now i'm going to connect to this corner to here and if you can get the line a little bit wider at the right hand side that'll make it look a little bit more give it a little bit more perspective but if not no worries so i'm going to start from here 
and then I am going to keep my eye on the prize which is the other marker and as I go towards this right hand side I'm pushing my brush a little bit harder which makes my line a little bit wider. So once I've got that on there and if you want it to look more like wood grain you could certainly pick up some of this original brown and just kind of streak it in there. You could take while it's still wet you could just kind of streak in a little bit of that whatever whatever visually works for you is totally fine by me or you could conversely put a little bit of white in it whatever look that you would like to go for is totally fine by me i'm going to do another line over here on the left hand side right along this molding edge or right along the edge of the building itself so something like that and again these lines can be kind of loose they don't have to be really super clean because we're going to be putting snow on them and all kinds of stuff. I'm going to put another one down this left hand edge of the building in through here. So something like this and you know you can keep a little sliver of the dark edge to the building if you want there to look like there's a little bit of dimension there. We're going to be adding some shadows and stuff later and of course our snow. So if again if it's not perfect no worries I'm not going for perfection on mine so the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to put two big windows here and in order for them to look like it's got a little bit of dimension to it I'm, I want my top line to be at almost the same angle as this maybe a little bit more straight and then when I go to do the bottom one it's going to be similar to this only a little bit more straight so I'm going to have two windows so what I'm going to do first so I don't make them um, go crooked is I'm going to do some vertical lines first so I'm going to cut this in half so somewhere I'm going to go about an inch or so away from the top of my um, line here and then I'm just going to make myself a vertical line it's probably going to meet my um, corner of my pot for my for my plant so something like that and then once I've got that vertical line now what I can do is I'm going to make another one to the right of it maybe about a half of an inch or an inch and maybe a touch taller something like this and you can see my lines are not perfect and maybe it comes down a little bit past my pot something like that then I'm going to do another one to the right as far over as you want just maybe a touch taller something like this and it's going to go down a little bit longer than the other one just a little bit so something like this and then I'll do one more over to the left if you want this window to look like this window you can use your brush as a measuring tool to keep it the same distance so it's going to be somewhere about here and it's a little bit lower than that one and again perfection is not not needed in this we're just having fun and this is going to go right down to my pot something like that so clearly the bottom of this one's going to be hidden in the pot and then I'm going to just connect my top lines like this like this and again it should be pretty similar to up here maybe a little bit less of an angle but you know again we're just going for for something representational and then this one's going to be similar to this but maybe a little bit less and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got your moldings on your door you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step okay so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting our windows so I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm going to be using mostly yellow and white and if I need to I'll go into my brown again but I think I'm going to get away with most of it with yellow and white so I'm going to load my brush with yellow and I'm going to make a shape for this top window up here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in past my molding this 
to right about here. Oops, just put my hand in wet paint. And I'm gonna go up a little bit from this molding in through here. I'm gonna make myself a similar arc to what I see on the edge of the building. So something like this. And it's not gonna be perfect, we're just free forming. And then I'm gonna do a line going to the end of my canvas, something like this. Again, I'm just using yellow right now. And then I'm gonna paint it all in with yellow. Something like this. And you can have a thin coat or a thick coat, whatever, whatever works for you. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with a base coat for the other windows. So you wanna try and get it kind of an even coat. If there's little streaks in it and stuff, that's okay. We're gonna do a second layer on it in a second, but just a nice, thin, even coat is gonna work out. And then I'm gonna paint these windows in here with just a thin coat of the yellow. And I'm gonna bring it to the edge of my, of my molding. And again, I'm just doing a thin coat because I want it to dry kind of on the quicker side. And if you, you know, if your molding is a little bit wet, you can certainly stay a little bit away from it, but just a nice thin coat of this yellow. It will be see-through, so it's gonna take on the look of um, the brown that is underneath it. And I'm just making sure that I get a nice Nice kind of even coat on here. And you'll notice if some of your paint is thicker or thinner that you'll have brighter or darker spots. That's okay because that when you're looking in a window, you're gonna, you can definitely have lighter and darker spots. And plus we're just going for a fun paint in here anyway. So it doesn't have to be a solid color. And then again, I'm just gonna get this whole area painted in here, making sure that if I can get a nice, even coat, great. If, the, if it's a little splotchy, that's okay too. But again, my, my main objective is just to kind of keep it on the thinner side so it dries kind of quicker, but because we're gonna go and do a second layer on it right immediately. So this thin layer will definitely help to help that sec, help us with the quick second step that we're gonna do. And then without washing my brush, I'm gonna go back to the first window and I'm gonna pick up yellow and white on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna add the lighter part of the window is gonna be the bottom left-hand corner on all three of them. So I've got yellow and white on my brush right now and I'm going to add this lighter section inside the window on the bottom left. So this window probably goes up really high. So this is just, to me, the bottom left sliver of it that we're seeing. And then I'm just gonna kinda get it to blend into that darker area. And then I'll do that with all three windows. And you might find that you wanna do another layer, but I'm, I think that's gonna work for me. I'm gonna go to the next window that I did. So yellow and white on my brush at the same time, bottom left-hand corner. So I'm not pressing my brush very hard. I'm just using a light touch here, which is allowing me to almost just kind of lay this paint on top of the, that first coat. But if you feel, you might want to, you know, do several layers to get the, the effect that is visually appealing to you. But again, I'm just going for this, this nice, evening hue, maybe the, the family's having dinner on the inside of the house, you know, whatever, whatever you're imagining it to be is totally fine. And the snowman, he's just waiting patiently for somebody to come and open the door so he can present his poinsettia gift to them. <laughs> so again, I'm just kind of going bottom left is going to be my my brightest or my lightest area. And if you bump into your pot, don't worry because we're gonna be painting over that corner anyways. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your lights in your windows and your windows are all nice and perfectly glowing, you can wash and dry the medium brush and get ready, whoops, get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our door with highlights and shadows. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors I'm using are black, my 
door color, which in my case is brown and white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my shadows on first and then I'll put my highlights. My shadows are gonna be below each thing that I think is popping out. So I, I, this is popping out to me, so I'm gonna have a shadow here. I'm gonna have a shadow underneath here. I'll have shadows underneath my window sills and then I'm gonna have shadows to the right of all of this stuff too because I think that the light would be highlighting the left side so it would have a shadow on the right side of that particular object. So after I do my shadows, then I'll go ahead and do my highlights. My shadows are gonna be the black and maybe a part of your wool, um, your door color. So I'm gonna start with just black on my brush. And for me, I'm gonna have a shadow up here. The black can easily take over, so just be cautious with the amount that you have. If you feel like you have too much, you just wipe it off on your paper towel and pick up some of the original color. So I have wet black up there and I will just get it to kind of blend into this little corner area of the, the building. And this is gonna make it look like there, there's a shadow up there and make this look a little bit more three-dimensional. I'm also gonna put a shadow underneath here. So I've got, you, you can have black and brown or just black, whatever is comfortable for you. So I've got a shadow underneath here, something like this. And I have a shaky hand, so I'm resting my hand on my canvas as I'm doing this. If you want this shadow to blend into the wall, all you need to do is wipe your brush off on your paper towel or into your door, pick up some of your original brown or original color, and then just get it to the edge to soften on, on this side of it, the, the side that's um, that touches the, the door itself, not the molding. And that will get that to look like it's blending right into the, to the wall itself. If you want this same thing down this little molding piece, you can just kind of pull this down a little bit and that's gonna get that to, to blend in a little bit. I'm gonna put a little shadow down here. So black and my brown. And I'm gonna do these shadows kind of on the looser side. If you want yours to be really firm and perfect, you can certainly work a little bit harder at them than I am, but I'm just gonna kind of allow my brush to just kind of take over. I'm using my original wall color too, just to kind of blend it in a little bit. Sometimes the faster you go on these steps, the, the more your hand will, will tell you exactly what should be done. And sometimes that allows for a more natural or you know fun painterly kind of style. So black with a little bit of my brown, I'm gonna do a shadow in through here. And again, it could be a nice smooth shadow, something like this, or it could be a loose, or a looser kind of interpretive kind of painterly stroke. So again, what, wherever your comfort zone is, I want one underneath here, underneath here. I think that needs to be a little more, more black or darker. So again, I'm putting the shadow on the side that I feel that the light would not be hitting. So if my light is here, my light is gonna shine here, but not in through here. That's just where, where my brain is telling me it would go, but your brain might tell you something differently. So just going down along this side in through here. And if you wanted to use a smaller brush for this particular step, you're more than welcome to. Little shadow down on this side. And this doing these shadows and these highlights can also help you to clean up some of your edges if you feel like some of your edges weren't as straight as you want them to be. I've got one coming down on this side as well. I'm using my pinky as my stabilizer. So something like that. I need to put one underneath here, right in through here. Oops, a little bit more black on my brush there. And then I also kind of want to have the look of panels down below. So I think I'm going to just kind of add maybe this with my some subtle little marks in through here. 
you don't have to do this. This is just something that's going to make my brain happy here. A little bit darker down here maybe. And again, just have fun with it. Whatever whatever you feel is working. Maybe some of my original brown to get this a little bit lighter. So sometimes you can just, you know, have fun with with adding little streaks here and there. I'm just kind of going to town now. <laughs> I'm going to add a little highlight. So without washing my brush, I'm going to just use a little bit of white and my and my molding color and I'm going to add just little little streaks of of highlights to give this just a little bit more dimension and again if I did my shadows on the right my highlights are going to be on the left I don't want it to go fully white because I know I'm going to have some snow on there so I don't want it to fight with the snow itself so I'm just really adding these little pops of highlights down my moldings just so Again, it can have some sort of dimensional element to it without overpowering the, the, the look of it. So something like that. And you can see right now, I'm just kind of going nice and loose with my brush stroke, not going too intense on anything, maybe a little bit here. I feel like I want something underneath that window up here. So I'm gonna just add maybe a touch of a molding or something. Anything to just make it make it feel and look like you you're comfortable with it and it looks nice and complete and I think that that works for me so I'm going to be using let's see we're going to use the same brush for the next step so once you've got your shadows and your highlights on your door and you've got it all nice and complete you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting ourselves a cute snowman hat. So I'm gonna be using my black paint, um, and you can totally freeform this hat whatever way that you want. I'm gonna just have mine, like, I don't know, maybe it's like a cross between a top hat and a cowboy hat. <laughs> but again, you can make yours whatever way you want. I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm gonna be using black paint only. And I want my snowman to kind of look like he's looking up at the house so I'm gonna tip my brim this way so when we put the face on he can kind of be looking almost in an upward motion so I'm gonna come up from my um, snowman face maybe about an inch and a half to two inches this is where I'm gonna have the the brim coming um, the tip of the brim and then the back side of the head I'm gonna come up maybe about I don't know, an inch or inch and a half or so, and have this come just into the edge of my canvas, something like this. That's gonna be the edge of my hat. So I'm gonna take this and maybe come up like this, cross over the head a little bit, and this can be wobbly, it can be straight, whatever you want. I like my stuff to have a little bit of movement in it, so that's what I'm gonna do for that. My brim is only going to be, this edge part is only going to be maybe about a half an inch thick and I'm going to come back to about here. I'm going to have the tip of my hat maybe somewhere in through here and maybe it comes like that and then I'm going to bring this something somewhere like this and then I'm just going to paint it in black. And again, yours can totally be of a different shape than mine. You just want to make sure it looks like it fits on the snowman. So you don't want this part to where it's here to be way over here because then it wouldn't look like it fits. Mine almost looks like it's a little bit too big for my snowman's head, but I think that's cute. So, uh, you know, maybe yours looks like it should be carrying a whole bunch of toys inside of it. Whatever, whatever works for you is totally fine by me. And then we're going to use, let's see, I think... Um, we're gonna actually use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your cute hat on here, you can wash and dry this medium brush and you can get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer for our poinsettia flower plant. And I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are red, black and green 
And how we're gonna do this is we're gonna do kind of a dark first layer, and then later we'll put the highlights and make it more vibrant. This is just gonna act as a nice base coat for them. And when we do this, you're probably going to be able to see through your paint and you'll be able to see some of your background behind it. Don't worry, the second step later will we'll take care of that. This Just think of this as like a primer coat. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with a little bit of black paint on my brush. I'm gonna put the centers for the flowers. I'm only gonna have two flowers because I know that they're really big and fluffy so I don't wanna confuse myself and put too many on here. So I'm gonna have my first center of my flower kind of like at the height of the neck and maybe an inch or two away from it. So all I'm doing is I'm doing some a series of black polka dots to create that center. And then I'm gonna go over to the right, shy of the corner of my um, pot and a little bit higher and do myself another little black section like that. Now, without washing my brush, I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna to pick up some red paint. So right now I have a little bit of black and some red on my brush at the same time. And these, these petals to these flowers are like these long teardrop kind of shapes so i'm i'm gonna have some in the middle which will be my top ones and then i'll put a bunch around the edge i like mine to be of different shapes or different um kind of movement to them so i'm going to be kind of working one petal at a time and I'm going to try and make them look a little bit different than from one another. So you can see they come out from the center and they've got these, they're pretty wide, they've got some nice points on them, on the tips of them, and then as I start working my way towards the edge, now I'm going to start making them maybe bigger. These are going to be the ones that are on the exterior and maybe they hide behind some of them a little bit. And you can really have fun with this. You can tell I'm kind of going slow because I, I'm, you know, kind of strategically placing my, my leaves. Maybe this one is going to come in front. And you may not be able to see the difference between all of them, but if you continue to load your brush with maybe a little bit of red and a little bit of black, they will naturally kind of uh, form different colors. So one will be a little bit darker, one will be a little bit lighter, and then that way you can see the difference between them. But you can see as, I, as I'm building this that they are in fact different shades. Some are darker, some are lighter. I feel like I'm starting to encroach on the other flower right now, so I'm, I'm gonna start to build these ones as well. So something like this. And you can just, in the in-between spots, you can maybe put a little bit of darkness or whatever, but again, it's gonna maybe look a little confusing initially when we go to do that second um, layer on them. It will, you'll be able to bring all of these pieces together. Maybe I want one over back here too. And again, have fun with this. Let, the, let this flower be as big as you want it to be. I've got some, you know, maybe somewhere in through here. So these are, again, really big petals and they're kind of pointy in nature. Ooh, maybe that's where it got the name poinsettia, because it's pointy. Hmm. I like it when my brain kind of thinks logical like that. I don't know if that's where the name came from, but it sounds like it would make sense because they're, they're pointy. I don't know. But it is a beautiful winter flower. It is one that you see a lot around the holidays where I am from. And, you know, maybe where you're from, you guys have different, different kind of flowers that are traditionally given or displayed along the holidays. So you definitely can have fun with, you know, transitioning this into whatever kind of flower that you want. But once I've got the, the red parts, now I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna do the green leaves around the edge. The leaves are very similar in shape to the actual plant themselves, so I'm just gonna be using green and black to do similar um, shaped leaves along the edges. So maybe this one comes out like this, and you can sneak it right in between. 
Maybe. And I like making sure that, you know, some of them have different direction to them. So again, know that you're going to have a second layer on this, but if you, you know, that will make them less see-through, but if you can add a little bit of direction to some of these petals or these leaves, sorry, that will kind of give more of a realistic look to it and have them different sizes. Maybe some are bigger than others. Maybe some go on top of each other. So, you know, just have some fun with this. Again, because we're working with a translucent kind of paint, you'll be able to see through it, but you can still certainly, you know, just kind of wiggle your brush in through there and you'll be able to see, see those leaves too. And then we are gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this first layer of your pointy poinsettia petals and leaves, you can wash and dry, or actually put the medium brush away, get out your small brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are gonna be painting our carrot nose and our rosy cheek. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm using are white, orange, and red. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm first gonna do a thin layer of white paint for my carrot nose. And the reason why I'm doing white paint as my first layer is because I don't want my carrot to be see-through because I've never seen a see-through carrot before. So I want to make sure it's nice and solid and you don't see any of this background. So I'm using white as like my primer coat. I want him to kind of look like he's, again, looking up. So I'm going to have my carrot nose somewhere around here. And I'm going to have kind of like a wiggly carrot. So something like this. And I'm just using white paint and kind of a thin coat. That was a little bit thicker than I had anticipated, but that's okay. And I'm just going to spread it out so it's a nice thin layer. And carrots can be wiggly, so you don't have to have a really straight line. I am I like it when it has, again, movement into it. And if you can see through the white at this point, that's okay because we're going with the second layer that we're gonna do in, in a half a second, that will definitely take care of that. But just a little bit of um, white for that first coat. Now we're gonna go do the cheek while that's drying. So what I'm gonna do for the cheek is I'm gonna use a little bit of white and a touch of my red and I'm gonna make myself a rosy pink color for my cheek. And then once I've got that, I don't want a lot on my brush, so I'm gonna wipe it off on my side here. I'm gonna have it down from the carrot, somewhere around here, and I'm gonna rub it so it's got really soft edges to it, so it almost blends into the surrounding snow. So. The less paint you have on your brush, the better. And you can just get it to kind of rub right into the side of the face. And then if you want it to look ooh so even more cute and glowy, you can touch your brush in white paint and almost put like a little white center to it. And that'll make it look even more um, three-dimensional. And then once you have your rosy cheek on there, then I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up some of my orange paint and paint my carrot orange. So now I've got a nice solid color on my carrot. I have one little wet spot that pulled the paint up a little bit, which that's okay. And then once I've got that on there, let me just make sure that I cover this little spot in through here and oh, a little bit of white will help me with there. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your cute little carrot on here and your rosy little cheek, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we are painting our eye and our mouth and our eyebrows, so our facial features. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I will be using black, blue, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put my eye in place first with a little bit of black on my brush. 
So again, I want him to kind of look like he's looking up. So I'm gonna go a little bit to the left of my carrot and I'm gonna go about halfway into my rosy cheek with an arcing motion. So something like this, like that. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a partial oval on the top of it. So something like this. And then I'm gonna color it in with a thin layer of black paint. So if you have a lot of paint on your brush, just wipe it off on your paper towel. And the reason why we're using a thin layer is so it dries pretty fast for us. So I've got that on there. Once I've got that, now I'm going to pick up some more black. I'm gonna do a couple of cute little eyelashes up at the top left of this eye. So something like that. And you could have a bunch of eyelashes. You could have like just three or four like I'm doing. Whatever works for you is totally fine by me. I'm gonna do a cute um, eyebrow. So this is gonna be like this line only in the opposite direction. Again, you can have yours whatever way you would like. So something like that. Then I'm gonna have um, a mouth. So my mouth is gonna go a little bit into my cheek. And if you feel like your um, brush is too wide or your lines aren't thin enough, you can always put a little bit of water into your paint and that's gonna help you to get thin, um, thin lines that you can control and just make sure your brush is nice and pointy on the end. So I'm gonna have mine somewhere in through here and then just kind of come in, in through here. And again, I like a little bit of wiggle. You could totally put a little thing like that on the end just to have fun with it. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. Once I've got that done, wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put my colored part in my eye. I'm gonna be using blue and white on my brush at the same time. So a little bit of blue and a little bit of white on my brush at the same time. I don't have much paint on my brush at all. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a crescent on the left hand side of the eye, something like this. And if you want it more blue, add more blue. If you want it more light, add more white. And then once I've got that on there, I'm gonna pick up a touch of white paint and I'm gonna put a couple of little sparkles. So I'm gonna do one sparkle here and one little one here. And that is all I'm gonna do for my facial features. We're gonna use, uh, we'll use the small brush for the next step. So once you've got that done, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're giving our snowman a little bit of an arm. So this is meant to look like a, a branch, so it can certainly have some wiggle to it. It can be straight, whatever works for you is totally fine by me. I'm gonna be using mostly black and white, but I'll, I might use a little bit of orange too, just to make it look like a little bit of a wood grain. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with just black and white on my brush at the same time. And I want my arm to start somewhere in through here and it's gonna hold, be holding on to my plant. So I'm really just gonna start with a diagonal line to give myself the direction that I want this to go in. And then when I go to do my fingers, you can really have as many fingers as you want. They don't even have to really look like real fingers. You can have them wrapping around the, the pot if you want them to. You can have, you know, you can have 17 fingers. You could have a little branch sticking out the side. Whatever works for you is totally fine. The trick that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my arm is a little bit wider up at the top where it meets the body. And I am definitely gonna make sure that I have a little pile of snow there in a minute. But right now I'm just kind of getting it on there. I'm using black and white on my brush. So it's kind of like a grayish kind of color. And then I will add a little pop of highlight and maybe a little bit of a shadow on the actual, um, the, the body itself. But right now I'm just kind of getting it on there. Gonna add a little bit of white onto my brush so you can actually see these little fingers. And again, it's a branch, so the more wiggle that you have in it, the more it's gonna look nice and natural. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of a some bark kind of marks on there. I'm gonna, I'm wa washing my brush right now 
And I'm going to add just a tiny bit of um, black, like watered down black onto my brush. And I'm wiping it off on my paper towel. I'm doing a little bit of a shadow underneath here. So I'm just going to kind of, I'm dipping my brush in water right now just so I can kind of get this to look like there's a little bit of a shadow underneath his body that it's being cast from that from that window and the shadow is just meant to look like it's uh, it doesn't have to be black it's just a, a, a faint or darker version of whatever it is underneath and then I'm going to add some white to my brush and add a little pile of snow around this arm right in through here make sure it looks like it's you know got some some texture to it and that this arm is just kind of, the branch is just kind of stuck into it. And I think I might add just a touch of orange to my, to my branch just to make sure it looks a little bit more like wood. Yeah, that looks good. And to make sure it pops out and you can see it. Perfect, all right. So we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your branch arm on there, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our flower, uh, or flowers, pot of plants. I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors that I'm using are green and red, and I will also be using yellow and white as well. And if you feel you need to go back into the black, you can certainly do that too, but those are gonna be my dominant colors. I'm gonna start with yellow and white and add the little tiny centers to the flowers. So I have yellow, and white on my brush at the same time. And I'm just really doing these little tiny three-dimensional little polka dotty things. I think I want a little more yellow on my brush. Yeah, there we go. I'm not covering up all that black area. I want this to definitely look three-dimensional and in order for it to do that, you've got to see those little shadows in between. So now that I've got that done, I have yellow and white on my brush. I'm just gonna pick up green. So yellow, white, and green can be your highlights for your leaves along the edge or your second layer plus your highlights. So something like this is gonna provide me, I think I need a little more green so it's not too, too light. Yeah, there we go. And if you feel like you need more substance or it needs to be a little bit thicker, you can certainly add a full second coat to it. So I'm just really getting some highlights and some movement on here. And if you feel like, again, you want any of them darker, you can certainly bring a little bit of that black back. But again, I'm just kind of adding these beautiful little highlights, making sure you can see the shape of those, those leaves and you can still see some of that that darkness underneath. I think I am gonna add a tiny bit of black with the green, just to make sure that I've got these inside areas where it's underneath the, the flower petals. Make sure that I've got that nice and dark enough. So right now I have green and black on my brush, and then the little area that pops out is gonna be the, the, brighter, the brighter piece. Yeah, that works. That works much better for me. And then I'm going to quickly wash and dry my brush to prepare for my red leaves. So wash and dry my brush. My dominant color is going to be red and then that's going to act as a highlight on top of what I've already done. And then once I've got that red on there as the main color and the main highlight, then I will add really vibrant pops with the yellow and the white. So here we go, I've got red on my brush and you don't have to color it 100%. You can leave some little dark spots from the, from the first layer that you did, but what you wanna make sure that you do is that you have good coverage. So if there's an area that is just, you know, saying, mm, I need more, I, you know, there's, there's spots in between the petals that you can still see the background that's where you want to definitely concentrate on adding uh, some additional paint if you need to. And if you want any of them to be a little bit darker, you could certainly bring some of that black back into it, but I would primarily start with just the red paint and that's gonna help you to get a nice 
visual on what needs more work. So this red, again, is going to be see-through, but that is excellent when you're putting the second coat on because you're still going to be able to see those dark areas underneath and you're going to be adding that vibrancy to it. So you can see they're really taking on a much more three-dimensional look right now. And then once I've got that second coat on there with the, with the red, then I'm going to start adding those that bits of information to tell the viewer which one's in front of the next and which one has a little bit of a highlight from the wall and or from the windows and also to make sure that I can't see through the flower. So I have red on my brush. I got my second coat on there. I'm going to add yellow with a touch of white. And the reason I'm using yellow also is because if I just use white, I will end up with a bunch of pink petals and this isn't a pink flower. So I'm definitely, the yellow will help to counteract that. So I have yellow, red, and white on my brush right now. And I'm gonna start to add these bits of highlights. I'll, I'll work them in a little bit better in a second, but right now I'm just kind of giving myself a little bit of a, of a roadmap where I want them to go. So something like this. And again, I am bend, I, I like to use the bend or movement in, in what I'm doing. So you can see as I'm kind of traveling around to some of these edges, I will work in that bend to it. And now that I've got a good amount of those highlights, especially over on the window side, now I can start just adding a little bit more red to my brush and getting these to blend in even more and making sure that Again, I can't see through them, and if I want some distinct edges, I can really just add those little pops of brightness, which is going to tell the viewer, oh yeah, this is the edge of one of those cool petals, you know, and you can put little highlights here and there that just continue to tell the story of where those, where those highlights are. And if you use just red and yellow on your brush, that's gonna add a beautiful highlight, especially over on the darker side. So as I'm going over towards this darker side, I'm using more of just red and yellow as my highlight, as that really bright highlight, as opposed to the white as well. And this is looking pretty good in my opinion. So I am just about done here. We have one major step left to go, but it's a really, really fun step. So we're gonna be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful poinsettia all nice and perfectly colored in here, make sure that you've got all these little spots colored in. You can take out your uh, large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to my favorite part of the winter paintings, which is to let it snow. So I'm gonna be using my large brush. I'm gonna be using white paint. And before I make it have snow fall, I'm gonna put snow sitting where I think that it would pile up. So I'm gonna be using my big brush. I'm gonna be using white paint. And for me, I think that there would be snow sitting on the corner of this house or piled up on the corner of this house. So I'm gonna be using a dotting type technique and I'm just gonna kind of have a whole bunch of snow just kind of piled up here. Maybe it's dripping down the side a little bit. Maybe there's a little bit up in this little corner up in through here and maybe that's kind of billowing over the side a little bit. Can really have a whole bunch of fun with snow. Maybe you want it all the way up there. Whatever works for you there. Then I know that I've got some on my hat. So I definitely want to have some resting on my brim of the hat. So I'm just using the edge of my brush. I've got quite a bit of paint on my on my um, brush and then I'm going to kind of go the same profile as I feel that, that that brim would go, which is the edge, something like this, and then maybe just kind of pile it up a little bit in through there. And then definitely there'd be a whole bunch of snow piled up on the top of his cute little hat here, maybe a little bit 
on the front stuck to the front of it when he was walking to the people's house and then I'm gonna just kind of put a whole bunch here and I've got it uneven at the top and maybe there's a little bit coming down the side and through there yeah that looks cute and then I've got some on the ground that I think would be piled up so I'm gonna pile some up uh, in this little corner over here and then as far as where the bottom of the door is, I don't want it to look like it's totally piled up there, but I definitely want to disguise this edge a little bit. So I'm going to just lightly put a little bit in through there, and then I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. And then I'm just going to kind of almost rub some little kind of dusty parts of the snow in through here. Like maybe people have walked on it a bit, but it's not fully cleared away all the snow has not been cleared away so that looks good and then those are all the places where i feel that i would want snow to sit so how i'm going to have my snow fall is i'm going to put a little bit of white paint on my brush i wiped it off on my palette like that and then i'm going to dab it on my paper towel i don't want a lot of paint on my brush i want it to look like a million little tiny pieces of snow so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start to dot it in like this so you might get some little clusters of snow marks or snow flakes so to speak it's gonna fall in front of the entire painting so you don't want to say oh well I'm not gonna put some in front of the hat you need to put some in front of the hat because that's the snow is gonna fall in front of everything unless there was like a, an umbrella over it or something. So I'm just going to, with this very tiny bit of paint on my brush, I'm making it snow everywhere. So you might end up wanting yours to be way more thick of a, of a look than mine, but I'm just trying to keep it pretty, pretty consistent. I hardly have any paint on my brush. So this way it really is just looking like a million tiny pieces of snow. So I'm going to go in front of everything. Just, you know, you want to make sure whatever is underneath it is dry. So if you are working on your flowers and they're still wet, you might want to give it a minute to, to let them dry. But I'm just going to go all over the place. You probably aren't going to see it in front of your snowman because he's all snow. But if you have little areas that look like you'd be able to detect that there was snow in front of it, just take that brush and just keep on keeping on until you have as much snow falling over your entire canvas as you want. And you can see I don't have really those singular pieces of snow but if you wanted to you could certainly use your smaller brush you could use you know to make individual dots but I like this you know all, all snow falls differently <laughs> but I'm digging this as adding this beautiful just a wintry effect to it kind of looks a little blizzardy I think I, I just put a tiny bit more paint on my brush I think I might want a couple more distinct ones in through here yeah that's working and then we have a one tiny little step to go so once you've made it snow all over your painting you can put your big brush away somewhere take out your tiny brush and get ready for the next step all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom left. I'm gonna be using black paint on my small brush and I sign mine with my initials. You could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like. It's your identifying mark. You sign it with whatever you'd like. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a precious little snowman giving a very thoughtful gift. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.